Hi, <clears throat> this is Josh Fox. I'm uh, recording a tape for your conference. Um, I understand, uh, as so many other places, Poland is in the grips of the huge controversy of uh, shale gas drilling and fracking. And what I wanted to let you know, it may not be obvious, but in the United States of America, this has been a huge debate. Um, if you were watching our presidential debate, you wouldn't know it. If you were watching any of the elections here in America, you wouldn't know it. Um, but here on the ground in Pennsylvania, or in New York, or in Colorado, or in Wyoming, or in Texas, uh, Louisiana, or, or New Mexico, any of the states where gas drilling has taken root or is proposed at a massive scale in the same way that it's being proposed in Poland, <clears throat> you have an incredible citizen uprising that has taken place and you're seeing organization on a level that I've never seen before. Um, where I am right now in the Upper Delaware River Basin in Pennsylvania near the border of New York, um, the location for uh, the beginning of my film, Gasland, the place where my family has 19 and a half acres and we were offered a gas lease to drill and frack for natural gas, we have fought off the industry and we have stopped them from drilling in this area, um, as has happened also up to this point in New York State. What all this means is that whether it's in my backyard or your backyard, um, in my country or your country, there really is no more backyard anymore. We know um, from uh, many, many investigations, mine in Gasland and many other publications from the New York Times to ProPublica to reporting from all over the world, that shale gas and fracking um, contaminates groundwater. We know that it happens by leaking um, gas through the, the cement that fails up through the pipes um, into aquifers and that people can light their water on fire wherever the gas drilling is occurring. And that doesn't, that seems to not matter what kind of geology that you're in, whether you're in Wyoming or in Colorado or in New York or in Pennsylvania or in Australia. We also know, um, uh, there are also many other ways in which it contaminates water, surface spills, pits that leak, um, illegal dumping, uh, wastewater injection. All these things can contaminate water, um, and it's coming in from many different angles. We also know that the fractures themselves can hit existing fractures in the ground and shoot contamination all the way up into to aquifers. We know that shale gas is uh, horribly polluting in terms of the air that people breathe all around it. Um, that these gas wells uh, leak off methane, that the pipes leak, that there is uh, intentional venting from the sites, that the compressor stations leak gas, the pipelines leak gas, the separators leak gas, and that that gas <clears throat> and other volatile organic compounds is unsafe to live near. So this is not an, an activity where you can have residential uh, residential area and this kind of development happening in the same place. It's not a place where you can have farming in this, in this activity happening in the same place. In a, in a, healthfully. This is not the kind of activity um, where you, you want to have anything but a major industrial zone. Uh, we know those things from reporting, from my own reporting, and from many, many other people. But what is coming to light right now is that shale gas is one of the largest reserves of carbon in the world. That this is happening all, th the, this is being proposed all throughout Europe. It's being proposed all throughout the United States, Australia, Asia, South America, Canada. And that Africa, and that shale gas represents a, a, a huge new regime of fossil fuel development on the planet Earth. And if we look at what we understand from the science on climate change, uh, we cannot go forward developing any new fossil fuels. Um, shale gas is like the next frontier of fossil fuel development. And it is a direct competitor with renewable energy, wind, sun, hydropower geothermal. Um, these are things that can be developed sustainably. Uh, there's no evidence right now that shale gas can be developed sustainably. There's no evidence that we can withstand what this would mean for our climate. When you burn shale gas, you're burning off carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere. It's a greenhouse gas. Um, and it's been touted that shale gas, or, or, or that natural gas rather, is uh, half of the emissions carbon emissions of coal. But we know uh, from recent work that shale gas also vents off a lot of methane directly into the atmosphere. 
and methane on a 20-year time scale is 105 times more potent a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide is. So in the short term, which is all we have in the 20-year time frame, shale gas is the worst fuel that we could develop with respect to climate change. So this is not just an issue of any one person's backyard or any one country. Um, this is an issue uh, that has global significance. When you're talking about developing shale gas in more than 30 countries around the world, huge reserves, what this means is another regime of fossil fuel development, 30 to 50 years. Our climate simply can't support that. So in addition to all the local issues, um, which aren't always all that local, local and regional, smog, air pollution, water contamination, industrialization of areas that are not um, previously industrialized, uh, handing over huge amounts of area to a fossil fuel industry that is in conflict with most other development, whether that's sustainable agriculture or residential or urban development. Um, it goes so far beyond that to a place where we have to reject shale gas and move towards the alternatives uh, and we have to do that vigorously. We have to do uh, wind, we have to do solar, we have to start developing things that are not going to continue to warm the planet. Um, and shale gas, as I just said, and you can do this research uh, on your own, it's confirmed by the United States Geological Survey uh, work that's come out of Cornell University, that shale gas is one of the worst fuels in terms of, of global climate change. So I know we all have our, our geopolitical struggles. In Poland you have um, a dependency on Russian gas, you have a dependency on foreign fuels. In America we have the same situation. but the only real independence is developing renewable energy sources and developing that on a community level, doing community solar installations, doing uh, wind installations where wind is possible and where it can be sited in ways that, that um, uh, are, don't disturb uh, people. But we know that we can do this. It's scientifically possible with existing technology to move the world away from fossil fuels in a much shorter time frame. If we're building a bridge to shale gas, we're building a bridge um, for 30 or 50 years, several decades more of developing gas, which is a fossil fuel, and we need to move away from that. So I, you know, I wish I was there. I wish I, I hope at some point to visit Poland and and, and talk with people. And I'm I'm, uh, you know, excited that there's a movement um, on the ground as there is throughout the United States. Um, this is an international movement against this form of development for all the reasons I stated, water, air, community, um, industrialization of, of important places and, 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 uh, and places where people live. But beyond that, we're in a struggle to curtail global warming and to rein in climate change. And shale gas is one of the worst directions that we can go in internationally to do this. So we have solidarity with you. Um, and we appreciate so much when you uh, act. We hear about it, we read about it, we see it on YouTube, um, and we're here for you. So uh, even though you may not see this be an issue being debated in the presidential race, it's a big issue in the United States, um, and it's extremely important that we, we, we work together on this. So thank you very much, and I, I hope you are, um, you know, having a... a, a an inspirational time talking about this and talking about how to go into the future, how to go into the 21st century um, without developing more fossil fuels. Thanks very much.